U.S. military ban on gays ends Yay. from September 20th. After years of court battles and political debate, the U.S. military formally ended its ban on openly gay troops on Tuesday with little fanfare. The historic change would enter into force one minute after midnight Tuesday, Pentagon Press Secretary George Little told reporters. We are prepared to repeal. It will occur at 12.01 tomorrow, De or Little said. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, will hold a news conference to coincide with the repeal, but the Pentagon was taking a business-as-usual approach with no high-profile ceremonies or events planned, officials said. After Congress voted in December to lift the ban, the military reviewed its policies and had 2.25 million service members, virtually the entire force, undergo training to ensure a smooth transition, according to Little. The 1993 law that will expire, known as Don't Ask, Don't Tell, required gay and lesbian troops to keep quiet about their sexual orientation or face expulsion from the force. Also, it was, it was to protect you, so if someone asked you, hey, you queer, you could say, that I can't tell you that, and you can't ask me that. Yeah. Roughly 14,000 service members have been kicked out of the military under the rule. Former President Bill Clinton backed lifting the ban altogether, but after he met with strong opposition <coughs> Republicans from commanders <laughs> and lawmakers, he accepted the don't ask, don't tell compromise. The military already has begun accepting applications from gay or lesbian recruits, but said it would not take any action on them until Tuesday when the prohibition officially ends. Gay rights groups, including soldiers who were discharged under the rule, are holding celebrations across the country on Tuesday to mark the chains. Change, even. Zeke Stokes, spokesperson for Service Members Legal Defense Network, said the change in the military's policy could help secure the eventual legalization of same-sex marriage. Yes! In the United States and perhaps around the world, the military tends to be one of the more conservative institutions in society, Stokes told AFP. For the military to embrace this, for the American people to see the military embrace this, make it work, see it work, I think it makes a difference in other civil rights issues. In every country where same-sex marriage is legal, open military service preceded it. But before Congress voted in December to repeal the ban, the military carried out a survey and found that most troops did not believe that allowing openly gay soldiers to serve would cause any major disruption. Out of all the services, opera, op opposition excuse me, ran stronger among the Marine Corps. One Marine working in the White House, however, backed the change. According to GQ magazine, the Marine recounted how he approached President Barack Obama when no one was present and thanked him for working to end the ban. You know, sir, I want to let you know there are a number of us that work very close to you who appreciate very much what you're doing on Don't Ask, Don't Tell. More than you probably realize, he told the president. Exactly. And off on a tangent, but we'll go back to this in a second. Out of all of Australia, Tasmania, the Hicksville place of the entire of Australia, has put forward their claim that gay marriage should be put forward and be okay. Yes. First state or territory in Australia is Tasmania. So that puts to shame every other state in this country. So move your asses, Queensland. Get onto it. Now, yes. yes. So this is good. Yes. And, you know, it's like I posted on my Facebook, like for any of you who are friends of mine, um, you know, everyone pays so much attention to those who are against it, to those who are trying to push it down. And no one really realizes how many supporters this has. Well, I don't it's see what unreal. the freaking hell that's got to do with your trigger finger, really. True. I mean, and it's like I was telling everyone, like, because God knows I've run into a lot of people who are against it, one of which is my cousin who went on a tangent about how repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell was a mistake. But anyway, um, to which, well, he's a Marine, so that kind of makes sense. But anyway, um, it just, it's unreal. And people... There have been gay people in the military for as long as there was a military. We're not talking just the American military or the Australian military or whatever. 
it, as, when militaries were invented, there were gay people in it. Exactly. And you know what? You've been fighting they... alongside a gay person, and you probably didn't even know it. What makes them so different now? And there was probably a lot of gay sex going on anyway. The only difference is they thought they were both straight. Exactly. But what I want to know is, okay, the section where it says undergoing training to ensure a smooth transi transition. What the frig does that mean? What <laughs> training I can come do up with you a few need? New ideas. What? So they're supposed to sit in a room while a drag queen walks around the room in high heels. <laughs> I mean, that's not going to happen in the military. This is our new fall lineup of the new uniform. <laughs> Don't forget to make your nails pretty. But, you know, what's the Swish, frick? swish, swish. I think we need new curtains in here, boys. What do you reckon? But, <laughs> but what the hell? I mean, what training do you need to go under? Seriously. <laughs> Apparently you have to watch two gay men go at it. I don't know. Well, maybe they made him sit down and watch Torchwood. Maybe that's why so many people complain. <laughs> <laughs> and all the actual gay ones are sitting there going, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. You want to see something real? I can show you something real. <laughs> Bound to go wow, wow. <laughs> It's, oh. I was having a conversation with this um, guy last night he, that he is openly gay. And, I mean, it's obvious. <laughs> but um, he said it's not like being gay is contagious. And I, you know, I brought up the point of you know, just because they got rid of don't ask, don't tell, doesn't mean that they're going to be flooded with these stereotypical homosexual males that, you know, are like... I would, their shoes do not match that uniform. Uh-uh, no way, honey. I am not wearing that. Mm -mm. <laughs> no! <laughs> People dressed as drag queens are not going to stand on the front line with this gun and go, does this gun make my ass look big? No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> do it on my chip and nail. But, no, it's not going to be like that. They're going to be the same uniform as you. They probably won't even tell you because they would feel awkward. You know, just because the don't ask, don't tell has gone doesn't mean they're going to walk around going, hey, I'm gay, get over hey. it. <laughs> you know. Do I really have to shoot them in the head because, oh my god, all that blood splatter would just ruin the interior design. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what are they expecting? This is crazy. I mean, yeah, don't ask it. Don't ask, don't tell being gone is great because that means yeah. people don't have to lie to themselves or the people that they're sort of uh, stationed with, basically. And the fact is, when you are standing side by side with each other on the front line, what does it matter? You're both fighting for your country. You're both there for the exact same reason. Who cares if the person beside you likes men or women? Exactly. You know, does it really matter? It has no bearing on how they pull the trigger. It has no bearing on how they drive a tank. And, you know, if they die, they're going to bleed red just like you. Exactly. I mean, you know, in death and all this, we are all exactly the same. Exactly. And we're going to run over time, so hey, let's run over way, way over. So Yay! <laughs> Okay, Petty Officer John Moore finds Saki a real... Oh, God, why did I pick this one? Arakawa's. Yeah, that. Message in a bottle after five years. From September 19. A Japanese girl has thanked a U.S. sailor in Hawaii for finding a bottle she has tossed, had tossed into the sea off Japan's southern coast as a child and is delighted to be reconnected with her old classmates as a result. 17 year old that said she'd almost forgotten about the bottle and initially couldn't believe it was found after five years in a telephone interview from her hometown in Kagoshima yeah something like that she said it's a miracle the bottle was found the clear glass bottle was found by petty officer John Moore during a beach cleanup at Pacific Missile Range facility on Kauai Island 
The bottle contained four origami cranes, a photo of Arika thingies, elementary Arikawas. Yeah, that. Uh, school class and a note dated March 25, 2006 and signed by say it again. Arikawa. That. Saying she wanted to be a graduate a graduation memory. So cool. I think that's sweet. And you know, I think it's great that she lived through the tsunami to see this because I think probably what would have been even more tragic is if you found this, went to try and find her and she died. Mm-hmm. But you sort of got to wonder, you know, how many kids might have done that and, you know, someone's going to find the bottle and and that's going to be their lasting memory in the world. I just, I think, honestly, when I first read it and even now, I, I have chills. I think that is just so cool. But, you know, if she did it in Australia, she'd probably get a fine for polluting <laughs> <laughs> for littering. <laughs> probably a good thing she did it from Japan. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Last yes, one. Yes, so, um, you know, some people have ridiculously large families, you know, and everyone has said, you know, or everyone has heard someone say, I'm a family of six, or I'm the youngest of six, or seven, or so. And we all sit there um, and go, oh my god, that many yeah. brothers and sisters. Oh. Exactly. Um, my grandfather was the second to last of 12 children. Really? I don't know what mm-hmm. number my grandfather was in the lineup, but my grandfather was one of 13 kids. But I think wow. one of them died really young. So technically 13, but, you know, 12. Yeah. Yeah. My great-grandmother, which would be his mother, started having children when she was 11 or 12. <gasps> and she died when she was 50. And so she wow. popped out babies all of her life, basically. Ew. What do you do but, for a living? Ah, I have birth babies. <laughs> but... I bet that it is nothing like this one. Uh, yeah, I bet it's nothing like this one either. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been reading over this name and practicing saying it for a long time because I just knew somehow the story was going to be mine. <laughs> Farmer Luis Costa del Elevario, age 90, has 50 children with four wives. Four women, excuse me. You were... A 90-year-old farmer has fathered 50 children with four women, including two sisters and their mother. Retired Luis Costa del Elevario admitted he does not know all of the names of his children and said there could be more. (gasps) He said of fathering the mammoth broad, brood, brood, whatever. (laughs) She could have been a mammoth, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the thing that God made best in the world was woman. Mm. They're supposed to be women, but he's Brazilian. Yeah. Lewis had 17 children with first wife Francisca. After she died, the lucky, lucky Brazilian found love again and had another 17 children with Maria Francisca de Silva, 64. 64! You were. When Maria got her sister, Azalita, to help with getting the kids dressed and fed, Louis struck up a relationship with her, too. The 58-year-old then gave him another 15 children. Even the sister's mother was not safe. Francisca Maria. Are you seeing a pattern here? Yeah. Anyone named Francisca or Maria? Run. Anyway, 98 or 89, sorry, succumbed to Louis's charms and had one child with him. Yuck. Hmm. God. Yuck. Fifty kids. 